in the learning to talk whilst not writing like a child I'm trying to give some feeling of the child's world how the child's mind operates. Hilary Mantel grew up in a working-class Irish immigrant neighborhood in the north of England. It was not an easy childhood. When she was six years old, her mother moved another man into the family home while Mantel's father was still living there. You were deeply scarred by your childhood. Have you come to terms with that? Well, an unhappy childhood is a treasure for a writer. Not to be cynical about it, but happy childhoods don't produce many good stories. So the whole point about being a writer for a career is that you take the bad things and you use them. You extract some good out of them. For years, Mantel has produced not just good, but great stories. Most famously, her works based on the life of Thomas Cromwell, the English statesman who served as counselor to Henry VIII. I thought, this is great. This is just a story of a man from nowhere who climbs right to the top of the hierarchy. How does he do it? Question. Where are you from? Putney, left when I was a boy. By mining Cromwell's rise, Mantel produced a best-selling trilogy that led to the Wolf Hall TV miniseries. He knows that all the king's subjects repose their hopes in you for an heir to the throne. Oh, very nice. Very nice, Master Cromwell. But try again. And she became only the fifth writer ever to receive the Booker Prize twice. When I began the book, I knew I had to do something very difficult. I had to interest the historians. I had to amuse the jaded palate of the critical establishment. And most of all, I had to capture the imagination of the general reader. In Learning to Talk, Mantel combines fiction and truth to confront the trauma of her youth. How much of Learning to Talk is biographical and how much is fiction? I said in my little introduction that it's not really autobiographical, it's autoscopic. Right. If you could get outside your own body and you saw a double of yourself, but that double had a slightly different story. That's how the book yeah. works. It's more raw. Oh, much more raw and close to the bone. Mantel's previously written other work more focused on her adult life, including details of her decades-long struggle with endometriosis, which led to a failed surgery that left her unable to have children. As she pursued her writing career, she lived in Botswana and Saudi Arabia. Mantel got married, then divorced, then remarried the same man the next year. Eventually, Gerald McEwen gave up his job as a geologist to manage Mantel's intense schedule. When you're deep in the middle of something now, you still disappear for days or long stretches? Oh, I disappear internally for about three years or as long as it takes. And I'm just a puppet who says certain set phrases and eats when reminded. <laughs> and, uh, yeah, I mean, my... How lovely for your husband. <laughs> <laughs> yes, I mean, he's, he's got used to relating to the puppet by now. Mantel told us she is once again deep in the process of working on a new historical novel. She also said she and McEwen just made a big decision. They are leaving England post-Brexit. They bought a house in Ireland. Britain leaving the European Union is not something we've managed to come to terms with in the years since it happened. So we want to go back to Ireland, get our Irish passports and, uh, and be part of the big story again. Why did that damage you so much? I've always thought of myself as a regional author, that is coming from the north of England, and a European author. And those have been my identities. I've always thought my heritage is European and I strenuously object 
to having that confiscated.